I'm here. Today is March 23rd. Woo woo! It's a national holiday. It's Brianna's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see. Let me see. There we are. To celebrate, she does not live at home. Glory to your name, God. She's 24, and I am grateful for it. Amen. No shade. No shade zone, right? As the kids would say, no cap. <laughs> yeah, you, you better pick it up. You got young ones in there. Amen. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm glad to be back in the house of the Lord. Lord. Amen. I wasn't feeling so great on Sunday. Glad to be here. Glad to see all of your faces. We got a full house up in here on today. We're going to have to figure out something because as people begin to come back for summer, um, you know, being in Bible study, we don't have any seats left. So either that or y'all just going to have to cozy up next to me. You know, they get concerned being that close to the Holy Ghost. They sit on the edges, y'all. So... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm um, really, really glad to be back. Excited to be here on tonight. Do I have a volunteer? Who is, oh my gosh, what are you two doing? Uh huh. <laughs> it was Terry. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear it. <laughs> She got chicken wings. <laughs> Terry says she got chicken wings, hot dogs and bologna under there. So <laughs> we, <laughs> yes, we served 120 today. And I said, we probably, y'all like that? <laughs> 120. Yes. Y'all should give God some praise for that. Amen. I don't know that people really realize how few people are really putting this together and making it work and serving our community. We always can use more help. So if ever you have time that you can volunteer, that you're available, please come. Jersey is the number one volunteer, aren't you, baby? She is the number one volunteer. And so she, uh, she's, she's here with her mom and Cameo's got a baby strapped to her chest and still pushing food out. Amen. So I appreciate all that you guys do. Yes. Amen. So definitely appreciate each and every one of you. And I know, I know, I know, I know, because we talked about it today in a meeting I had. Our community definitely appreciates what's being done. So praise the Lord for it. Um, can I get somebody to pray us in on today? Thank you. There's no crickets in the house. I love it. All right. Want to pass the mic? You thought Bishop was going to pray tonight? Come on, Bishop. Hey, Stefan. would have us to do father and as to go forward father doing what it is that you desire we thank you for the teacher on tonight god we thank you that she is feeling better father continue to just bless her in ways that are unimaginable to her father bless those workers that are in the pantry feeding the people in the community as well father we know that they are tired but they work tirelessly for you god and we know that you have a reward for them it's in the name of jesus that we pray amen all right well, we want to start off with our scripture and share with one another how we are displaying to the world that God is our father and Jesus is our brother. Our scripture is first Peter uh, chapter three, verse 15. Y'all bear with me. I am battling a headache probably because I, my, my Keurig, I was playing taps. You guys, it, it went to the great Keurig in the sky and <laughs> it did. So I have not had real coffee for two days and my head is like, boom, 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 boom. so needless to say, it's been rough. So y'all pray for us, sister, because she needs a new Keurig. Y'all, for real, I am not even playing. I can't take the one in the kitchen. 
I know. I think Troy's listening. He'll uh, he'll be ready to fight me <laughs> if I took that carrot. Go. That was what he's saying. Yeah. He said, I, I came in there ready to cry because my Keurig wasn't working. And I, I tried it. I unplugged it, tried it. It still wouldn't work. And I'm like, it's not working. He was like, looks like it's going to be instant coffee today, huh? Are you kidding me? Come on. It's nasty. And there's no kapow to it or nothing. So I thought that after I whined a little bit that he'd go buy me one, but it didn't happen. So Needless to say, battling quite the caffeine headache right now. So y'all bear with me, please. But our scripture is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for a reason, for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear and in the end, a logical defense and assurance. And we asked him on somebody's how to record. Are there any testimonies? You knew I was going to call you out. Um, got it. And I passed my nursing board. How is that done? Amen. <laughs> she is, and so he, when it came to taking the boards, those boards are not easy. It was difficult. Amen. So imagine for her RN, what that is. And you were able to get that done in four years and tell them when you started, what did you find out? Um, in 2020, when I started, I found I was pregnant with Jersey and I told myself I wasn't going to let that stop me. And so now here I am with two kids later. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, God has shown up and he has kept you and continued to work with you and the work that you're doing with the people. That's what makes all the difference in the world. And I guarantee that when you're in there working with the people, your light is shining. Your light is shining. So praise the Lord for that. Does anyone else have a testimony they'd like to share? how you display that God is your father and Jesus is your brother? Don't you start. Uh, you were leaning over there to show, but it say something bad. I know it. <laughs> no, I mean, I just, I just think every day, you know. You got to wait because they can't hear you, babe. All I need is one mic. <laughs> It does not travel that well. Hi, my name is Will Brazel. <laughs> See what happens See? when you stay See home. Huh? <laughs> oh man, no, I just, I just want to say that, um, yeah. because we're, because we're at the food pantry, um. You know, we're showing God to other people because when you look at some of the folks, you know, they may think, OK, I'm here at a food pantry, you know, and I'm no better than they are. I could be sitting in the same car as they are coming up for food. So we there's no judgment with the people. And a lot of times um, we laugh about some of the stuff that we do see in the cars and other things. And but we still treat them. This, OK, the smells. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, we still, we still treat them just like, you know, they're God's children, just like we are. And, um, so, and a lot of times, a lot of the folks, you know, they tell us, thank you. And, you know, that, that, that helps out a, a whole lot and makes, it makes you feel good and it makes you feel good. You're coming here and you're, you're doing something and you're making a difference for other folks. So you, that's it. Amen. <laughs> I had an unusual experience today at a restaurant. I could hear questions in my head about uh, where did I get the authority to teach and share the gospel? I said, well, um, I, I'm a student of the gospel, and it does me no good not to share it. These, these questions were all in my head. Well, why not the Old Testament instead of the New? I said, where is your authority? I said, well, the Bible is one book. The Old Testament is the beginning of the sharing of the word of God. The New Testament is a combination of the two. And I told him, I said, you wait on the long awaited Messiah. The New Testament tells us that he has 
come back and go on and will come again. Uh, it was in my head. Uh, I, when I realized that everybody around me was quiet and some people were saying, amen, that's pretty good. We never thought about it that way. And questions continue. Uh, Apostle, they were all in my head and people were leaning to and some were saying, I never thought that. And um, they asked about, uh, I think it's, it's the second Timothy, um, 2 and 13, all oh, scripture is given by the um, uh, paraphrase, admonition, and um, the, uh, um, um, what do you say? What do you say? Authority of the Lord our God. People were going, she's telling the truth. But possibly it is all in my head, but people were answering my God. So uh, yeah, Jesus is my brother. God is my father. People ask me a lot of times when they hear me they think, where I get that authority from? I say, well, you cannot teach unless you've been taught. And where you get I say, my pastor and preachers that I've sat under have uh, uh, given me, I don't know if you want to call it authority, but a, a, a desire to share the gospel whether it be in my head or whether I speak out loud. Amen, Miss Sherry. Praise the Lord. I am so excited that you have accepted the responsibility of sharing the gospel. And, you know, regardless of whether you're hearing it, you were vetting the voice by sticking with what you know to be true in the word of God. So thank you, Jesus, for giving you the wisdom to know the difference between right, wrong, and being able to discern whether or not the voice was of God or not of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Any other testimonies? You're pointing. What's the testimony? Oh, we got to pass it around. Pass the mic. Oh, OC so got it. Praise so we went to the pizza ranch last week to support a different mission team that used to be part of our mission team that went to Tijuana. And um, there were some gentlemen there that were had leather jackets on and their hair was kind of different and they were a biker gang. And um, everybody at our table wanted to know more about them. Was it Hellraisers? Hell fighters. Hell fighters was their name. Anyway, so I approached the gentleman and asked him if he would be willing to come and share with us a little bit about what he was doing. And it was just an incredible experience to have that opportunity to hear about how that they act um, like a godly gang. So they know how to interact with the different um gang members and stuff and they actually have several of them that are good friends of theirs and um, they go to Sturgis and I think it was the Sunday of Sturgis at two o'clock they commission people yeah. and um, so it was a powerful experience to get to to know more about them and they handed out some little books that they believe um, I don't have mine with me uh -huh. Yeah, I left mine at home too. Yeah, but it, it was just amazing the way that God brought us all together at that very moment just to share about another opportunity. For me, um, it doesn't make me feel like I want to go out and do what they're doing, but it was just a reminder that it's what we do when we go inside the prisons, like they go inside of the gangs or when we go to Mexico, it's just a different um, territory, a different environment, a different um, way to reach people and reach them where they are. So That's right. it was a blessing. It really was a blessing. You know, when I think about that, it's evangelism. Where to go into the highways, the byways, the hedges, where to go into those places. And, you know, religiosity would tell us to keep ourselves separate. 
to separate ourselves from them. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to be hanging out with them all the time, but I'm going to go in those areas and let my light shine wherever it is that I go, whether it be the grocery store, I'm passing by a homeless person. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to let my light shine everywhere that I go. And that is literally how we show the world that God is our father and Jesus Christ is our brother. And it's through those encounters where we're able to pray for somebody. We're able to speak life into somebody. You don't know what they've gone through just to get into that day. We don't know what they've experienced the night before, the week before, the month of, you know? And so when you are in, when you are given that opportunity, we want to make sure that we don't let loose of that. Amen. Amen. Any other testimonies before we move forward? All right. Um, do me a favor, please. Can you come inside and plug my computer in? I was, you sure? Because I was going to not have you. All right. All right. So who remembers, not last week, but the week prior, what we began to speak about? We're continuing on talking about betting the voices. And we started off going down a path. Does anyone remember what we were talking about? <laughs> crickets, crickets. Vetting the voices? Yes, we were talking about vetting the voices, but what were some of the highlights or the points that we hit? Um, being able to distinguish whether or not it's God telling you something or it's the enemy telling you something. And God's never going to tell you something that contradicts what it is that his word says. Come on, and that's what I'm talking about. Yes. yes, so we were talking about how to know the difference between the voices that you're hearing whether it's of God or whether it's not of God. And we started talking about how sometimes the people close to us, remember we looked at um, Abram and how the Lord told him, get away from his family. And we started looking at Terah to figure out why God was saying, I need you to separate from them, from Terah. Remember? What was the past history? They were heathen. They were unbelievers. They don't work. Yes, they worshiped other gods. So in worshiping those other gods, um, part of their worship was to sacrifice children, right? So God said, I need you to separate from everyone. I need you to separate from what they do. And I need you to make yourself holy before me. But in return, I'm going to bless you. There's some things that I want to do for you. There's some things that I want to do through you. Not only did God want to do things for him, he wanted to do something in Abram, but he also ultimately wanted to do them through him. So we looked at some scriptures, some of the scriptures that we looked at. Um, first, we talked about what it means to vet. Um, we looked at Miriam, what was he, a second? For, and it would potential his our master technician was celebrating 50. Amen. That's something to give God some praise for. Amen. Exactly. So when you look at the definition in Webster's, in middle approval or acceptance, to subject to usually expert a critical examination of something. They literally are rolling around in our minds. You have examine, right? Where you overdo it. Um, after I found it, after I finished, going, I was excessively. What is that rooted in? Fear mm -hmm. and anxiety. So if you find yourself going, anxiety has slipped in, fear has slipped in. And the Bible actually tells us that God does not give us the spirit of fear, but he gives us power, love, and a sound mind. Why? Because it begins to torture or into a place of torture or torment. So if we're hyper in middle, is that God? What does the Bible say about this? Okay. Now in the beginning, because you're a little more than normal, that's the voice of God from the voice of strangers. So because there's so many voices around us, so many voices saying so many things. We have our own internal voices. Remember we talked about um, last year, I think it was, or the year before, I can't remember, but our desire has a voice. Our desire will speak and say, hey, you want that. As a matter of fact, you need to do this, this, and this to get that. But we never once stop and say, does the Lord want me to have that? 
-hmm. What does the Bible say about me having or doing that? But that desire will blast louder than anything. So we have to get control of our soul. We're talking about having a soul under control. And the way to do that is to vet the voices. So we've got to stop and evaluate what it is that we're hearing, what it is that it's, what's driving it. What is the driving force behind it? And we examine it against the word of God and ask yourself, is this the way that God would have me to do it? Or is this my desires pushing me into a place that God would not have me to go? Amen. We Amen. also looked at synonyms. The synonyms were screen. Are you screening those thoughts? Remember, it starts as a thought. You attach an emotion to it. You act out on the emotion that dictates your destiny. Okay. It starts off as a simple thought. This is why we have going on in your head. What's taking up mental real estate in your mind? Are they yelling and question is, is for you? That guides that. Are you assessing? Are you evaluating, appraising, weighing it? Pull me further away. Are you stopping to ask yourself this? Or are you forcing situations because your desires are speaking louder than God is right now? Let me, before I say absolutely, give me an example of what that would look like. Well, I have an example. And it's not what's going on in my life. So, but we were discussing this and how do we know like if, for and talk to you and give you thoughts that you need to think that, or is that coming from the enemy? That's not something that you can just literally have a cookie cutter response to because the enemy can speak to create fear and anxiety. But if God speaks, God's going to pull back the covers and he's going to show. So anytime something like that pops into your head, if ever that were to, God forbid, I know early on in our marriage, I used to think crazy things because that back, I'm going to not use that word because it's not crazy. What had happened by my spouses, plural. And so ended up happening is I had little to no trust for any man. I didn't believe that they could really be faithful. And so one time we were in Texas and he went to go and get us some food from Whataburger. <laughs> he came back and I had completely lost my mind. It was laying on the road somewhere. I'm crying. I'm leaving him. And he's like, I got the food. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know what happened. Literally. He's like, look at the receipt on the bag. Stephanie, look at the receipt. So what happened is, as he was going to go get the Whataburger, the Whataburger was probably like 15 minutes away from the hotel. He missed the exit and went to the next one. So when he got back, my mind was gone. He was with somebody in Copper's Cove. Now, granted his ex lived there, but they had been ex for a million years. The chick's at work. I'm in a hotel. And he was gone maybe 45 minutes. What could they have done? I mean, they could have did something, but my God, that would have really been jacked up in a bathroom somewhere, right? So if, if we're really, <laughs> if we're really thinking this through, <laughs> if we're really thinking this through, but that's what I'm saying. I wasn't thinking it through, but let me, let me finish this out. I wasn't thinking that through. All I could think about is how I was feeling at the moment. <laughs> so what ended up happening is he comes back. I go completely off on him and I tell him, when we get back, I'm leaving you. I can't stand you, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what the heck just happened? All I did was go get some <laughs> This is what just happened. But <laughs> allegedly... <laughs> But, but think about it. Who planted that thought in my mind? My past. Everybody immediately went to the enemy. My past spoke to me. The unhealed trauma was speaking. The things that I had gone through that I was not healed from before I jumped quickly into a new relationship because I knew 
I'm looking at this fine young man over here. We ain't going to stay celibate long. So we need to go ahead and get married. Right? Can we be honest in the house of God? So within, we started dating. Now we were best friends, started dating. February 14th was our first date. We were married July 19th, do the math. Because I was like, we're going to gamble this thing one time too many and it ain't going to work out well. Right? So I, and then I'm going to, I'm going to have to stand in the pulpit after that. But, but here's the deal. If I'm not honest, you're going to have me in a position that I was just this perfect, wonderful little Christian who never did anything wrong. And then you're going to try to match that and can't figure out when you fail, how to get back up again. Can I talk Amen. to you about being human today? Amen. Can we be real in the house Amen. of God? This is the problem Amen. with Amen. church today. The problem is people put the pastor up on a pedestal. Yeah. And then when the pastor makes a mistake, people lose their dog on mine and they walk away from God. Yeah. That's a problem. Amen. And we're not doing that here. We're go Amen. We put this stuff on the table. Let's talk about the truth. Now, here's the truth. That was 20 years ago, so you can't hold me to that. Right? I'm not the same person that I was 20 years ago. So my past was speaking to me, and I did not know how to vet the voices that I was hearing. The voices were saying this to me. He's just like everybody else. He probably out there doing this, that, and the other. Now, if I would have stopped and actually thought about what the thought was speaking to me, what the pain of my past was saying to me, I could have actually said, well, dang, he's only been gone 10 minutes. What, what, what could he have really done? But he literally was like, because when he left, it was a quarter to 12 and we had to be out of the hotel by noon. He's like, well, it's only 10 minutes away. I'm going to run and grab it before um, they stop serving breakfast. So he was running over there to grab it and then get back. And I, I could not stop the thoughts because it attached to pain. I acted on the pain that I was feeling. And then it's almost dictated my destiny. So is it possible that God could have spoken something to me? Yeah, but I guarantee God would have gave, given me confirmation. It wouldn't just be a feeling. He would let me know. Anytime I get a feeling about something, I have gotten to the place where I'm saying, okay, Lord, I need you to go ahead and reveal to me if this is you or if this is something else. Is it something that's unhealed? I'm, for those who were at the funeral, when me and my sisters had our uh, dispute, it was because I was hearing something in my head that tied back to pain. They weren't thinking that, but because we weren't communicating effectively because everybody's emotional. Our emotions are everywhere. We weren't hearing what the other was saying, even though all of us were repeating the same thing over and over again. And the Lord was like, okay, since all of y'all want to act special, none of y'all get no sleep. Well, all three of us were up at 2.45 in the morning and did not know all of us were awake. I ended up writing. I wrote out what was in my head, what I was thinking, how I was feeling. I sent it to my sisters. They read it. They're like, oh, my God, that was not even where we were at. I am sorry that that's how you took what I was saying, because that was not the intention at all. And once we talked about it, we all cried. And then we we're like, OK, where are we now? What, what needs to be done? And we were able to get back on the road. But had we have not stopped to really examine the thoughts that were going through all of our heads. Because all of us had some really off thoughts during that time. And if you're not healed, I promise you, if you don't scream, you don't assess, you don't evaluate, you don't appraise, you don't weigh, you don't examine. If you don't take the time to think about what you're thinking about, bring them into reality. We always talk about going from revelation to manifestation. That means we have to bring what God revealed to us into the earth realm and make it reality by applying what he's spoken to us. We got to do the same thing with these thoughts. Bring them into the reality of where we are. 
Now, does this even make sense? Does this match up with what the word says? Does this even line up with my destiny? Because a lot of times when we are desiring something so bad, we can find ourselves doing things that take us away from our destiny instead of push us into it. Do you understand this is something that is just, it amazes me. And a friend of mine, a very strong prophet of mine, she, she just spoke to me. She said, this was Monday. Now that your parents have passed, watch who now starts to pimp your gifts. Do you realize the amount of job offers that are landing in my inbox right now? Job offers. Because I kept telling everybody I can't get involved with that right now because I'm taking care of my parents. It would blow your mind. The things that are dropping, and, and this is how the email begins. I have funding. I got one this morning. I have funding got some money no joke and and here's what's amazing well I don't have to take care of them now what could I do with an extra how, how hard would that be it's only a few hours but does it align with my destiny we're talking about vetting the voices we're talking about obtaining the promises of God we're talking about making sure that I am aligned because if I'm too busy over here, too busy over here, too busy over here, I can't be here. Hello? Out of assignment and out of alignment. You've got to vet the voices. Because I'm telling you, looking at them dollar signs, I'm like, are you sure? Okay. But the reality is, we have to be wise. Desire to be able to buy my little purses when I want. Now I got to save up to buy my little purses. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's throat is real dry over here, y'all. Talk about... <clears throat> Vince, you need some water. But again, back to what your original question was. Can God tell you yes, but he'll show you too? That he shows it to you. So for instance, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was in bed with my best friend's boyfriend. And when I woke up, I couldn't tell him because I'm like, oh my God, why was I dreaming something like that? Stop it. I did not like this man. I could not stand him. I did, I mean, I, I, every time she would bring him around, my skin would crawl. I'm like, why are you with him? I don't even like him. Get him out of here. But she stayed with him. She was in love. So I didn't tell her, but the Lord told me that I was supposed to call him and let him know that if he didn't stop, that he was going to get caught. So I called him, said, hey, the Lord said to let you know, he didn't tell me what you're doing, but he said, if you don't stop, you're about to get caught. And he was like, hey, 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 hey. all right, here you go with that God stuff, right? Okay. About three weeks later, she walked in and caught him with the nanny. It was me in the bed in the dream. The reason why God allowed it to be me, he was giving her a chance to repent. But she did. Neither did he. I represented someone who was close to her. That nanny lived in her house. That nanny had access to her accounts and everything. And that became a real problem. A very real problem. So the reality is this, if God's going to show you something, sometimes it may not be the person in the dream. They may represent something or someone else. 
But I had to go to the Lord and ask him that question so that he could tell me what was going on and I knew what to do. Because otherwise, the voices in my head, because I lived a promiscuous lifestyle back in the past, the voices would have said, oh, here you go with uh, lust and, and it's coming on you and now you're lusting. That's what the voices wanted me to think. But really, God was giving me a warning for them. Had I have not known to vet the voices, that was going to be a real problem. I would have missed giving him the chance to repent. God always intervenes and gives people an opportunity to repent before he judges. He will always give them an opportunity. When he judges, he is righteous because he has given you more than one chance to get it fixed. He has given you more than one warning to stop it. Think about it. Whenever you finally got busted, whatever it is that you were doing, how many warnings did you get before it happened? How many times did you get the conviction and not feel right? Or someone come up and say, are you sure you should be doing that? How many times did you question, maybe I shouldn't? And then finally, you got but Exactly. Finally, you get busted. When it's God, you know. It's not a question. The enemy operates in questions. How did he affect Eve? Go to Genesis 3 for me. Doubt please. and deception. He got her right. He he caused her to doubt, but he asked her questions. I'm gonna show you the parallel. Go to Genesis 3 and then we'll go to Luke 4. Darn you guys with these questions. Took me away from my lesson again. <laughs> it does. Uh, um, good job, Shelby Jr. <laughs> You're doing good. You're doing good. All right. Let's look at Genesis 3 and 1. All right. I wonder why that's showing up there now all of a sudden. It's making you mad, ain't it? Darn you. Patrols are on the bottom. Hold on, guys. We're going to get that line out of your screen. There you go. All right. Starting at verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. That word cunning actually means he was insidious he took his time he was wise he was smart in the way that he had approached and attacked remember the enemy is like a lion lions hunt they look for the weak and he found the weak one in the woman it says and he said to the woman has God indeed said the first thing the enemy will always cause us to do is question what God has said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Here's the mistake. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, not eat it, nor shall you touch it lest you die. You get to the place where when you hear him spoken, don't even engage. Tell him, get a master at um, quick change. I don't money. He could go to a store and he gave me five twenties. They'd give him 520s before he ended up with most of the money that was in their drawer and they ended up short. I never figured out how he was able to do it. Start asking you, now give me five fives for this, this. Now give me two tens for that. He said, if they engage with them, because the moment you engage, you've already lost because you're trying to outsmart them and they've already studied you. The enemy, we don't know how long he sat in that tree before he approached you between Adam and Eve. We have no clue how long he studied. If he's like a lion, he studies his prey before he ever attacks. So what ends up happening is she engaged. We got to get to the place where once you hear the doubt, shut it down. Let the voice. That is not God. No. Especially when it comes to lust. Why do we wait? You start feeling these emotions. You already know what's going on. Shut ten and two position. Come on. Shut it down immediately. Don't be engaged. You will not surely die. God's a liar. He just knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Genesis 1, 26 says what? Let us, our image, and give them dominion. They were already like him. They were all. That means everything that he did, guess what? Even marvel at what I'm doing? You have capability around weak. Go ahead back to chapter eight of it. Your eyes will be to the eyes. An image. It's time. Now, what I'm about to do is you start to get one. We'll do it. He does, and if you read the word, 
He searches the gotta read the word because we can compare this. Guess what? I Googled it in third. He's like, there's a little orange right hand corner. I said, it means that it's listening. What does the word? How can we stop and then know how to eat? I don't the most desire I took it. Who went to do long us go? But we do what we is that it dictates our destiny. Go ahead to the next scripture. And then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked. God had shielded them. They didn't know dominate. Now all of a sudden they recognize that there's something out there that's greater than they are. But it was a lie. They came into agreement with the Father in their own eyes. Does that make sense? Do we understand that if God has spoken something, this is it. Every voice. We've got to evaluate. Every, we are the ones who determine whether or not the thoughts that are in our minds are approved or not. But the stay there. Are you rejecting it, repudiating it, getting rid of it, rebuking it? This is where we have to get to. Now, let me ask you this question. What happens if you can't get in touch with it? <laughs> so, there is nothing wrong with calling for validation. What does the Bible say about it? There's safety in a multitude of counsel. But you better make sure that the counselors you're calling know the word. And the, here's the deal. It's okay. No. You have to start utilizing your resources to examine. The, honestly, some of the stuff, we could, if we just stopped and just Googled, what does the Bible say about blah, blah, blah? We would already have the answer. Honestly, we would. But for whatever reason, we can get degrees, but we're afraid to Google. Yeah, we're, we're afraid when it comes to the word. Hello. Is that what you do when you go to a job? Yeah. <laughs> Is, isn't there something that you have to be able to look up what's right, wrong, or indifferent on a job? How do we stop the voices? How, How do, do we, we stop, stop the, the voices? The way yes. that we stop the voices is we compare the voices to the word of God. You have to compare what you're hearing to what the word of God says. And once you see the difference between the two, you have to give that thought approval or you have to reject it. You, you choose acceptance or rejection. Ms. Velda just said, believe or be back. It's one or the other. Can you take a mic, Ms. Velda? Believe or what? Believe or be bound. You have to believe the word or else you're going to remain bound. Yeah, I had to make a decision this week to be either believe the word of God or be bound. Um, some years ago, I had a kidney surgery and it was egregious. It was the most pain I have ever had in my entire life. So this week, actually tomorrow morning, I'm going to have another surgery. And the enemy kept working in my mind, telling me, oh, you remember how painful that was? Um, this time, you're not going to make it out of this one. And so I had to keep battling back and forth with what it was saying. And I said, okay, God, what is the root of this? The root of it was the fear of that pain again. And me just saying, I'd rather not go through that. But I had to also look at what my destiny is. My destiny is not to die a premature accidental death. God has me here for a reason and I haven't fulfilled that purpose. And then I also had to look at the week before I had shared my testimony with a group of people and the things that God had delivered me from. Also during this week, I had a couple of people reach out to me saying, I know that you believe in the power of prayer. Can you pray for me? Can you pray with me? So I had about three or four people do that. So it had to be that God implanted something in me to give to other people and he's not done with that. So I had to vet that voice that was speaking to me saying that this was going to happen to me. And also this voice kept telling me, stop just stop that that's not what's going to happen the ironic thing about this is this surgery is much easier than that first one was but the enemy used the pain of my past and that fear to try to bound me at this point in time and I was sitting there doing dishes today and God told me believe or be bound you're either going to believe me or you're going to have be bound and so I said Lord I believe you and I'm about, I'm going to be bound too, but what I'm going to do is bind the enemy. So that's what I did. I bound him and said, you know, you have no authority. You have no right, no anything. 
regarding anything of my life. So I'm not the one bound, you're bound. You're bound and you're not going to be loosed again. So I know that once I go through this surgery, there will be complete healing and the enemy can't use that against me again. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Luke 4, because I want you to understand the enemy's tricks don't change from Old Testament to New Testament, from past to present. So Luke 4. So Jesus was just um, in Luke 3. He was baptized upon him in the form of a dove. And God spoke. And said, this is my book four and one. It says, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. So understand, God just spoke, declared who he is before the earth. Everybody who was present got a chance to hear what the Lord spoke. Got a chance to hear that even John the Baptist heralded first. I'm not even worthy to loosen the latches of your sandal. He says, oh. What, what do you want me to baptize you? He said, yes, you have to do this so that the words can be fulfilled. Prophecy can be fulfilled. So now Jesus is filled with Holy Spirit. This is why we can be what? Filled with Holy Spirit. And he returned from the Jordan and was led by who? Oh, did y'all ever notice that? He was led by the Spirit where? Into the wilderness. And look at the next part of that verse. To be tempted for 40 days by the devil. Nice. He was led in the wilderness to be tempted by. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were in, he tempted for 40 days, he's tempted. Then we see in the next scripture, you are. Now, God just, this is a please test it. When you are called to do something, as soon as if you knew who you were did you believe are you going to overcome the flesh because just as made in the likeness and in the image of god he stumbled he became a living soul it's adam's soul that got in the way not adam's spirit living soul it's the soul your soul is made up of what this is why we have to stop at the thought level it's your soul that fight everyone is in the league are y'all with me tonight? Your body is going to do that. It's not going to overeat. It's not going to sin. It's not soul. Your mind and your emotions are intrinsically connected. Not separate them by putting the word of God in. But God has given us the what? All over what? Our emotions. When you look up that word mind, it actually means seat of the emotion. Y'all with me? I saw it. Mm. Into the plate control of God. He's wrapped in an earth suit. That first Adam is Jesus in an earth suit. That has suffered that. It's within have to understand how to thought level Jesus so tricks from the if you are the son answered him saying and as you go through written men shall not live by bread he took him in a moment of time the devil had their glory he get it don't say that committee with God enemy because if I even get see money at oh, buildings but the organization didn't want to turn over their financials I said, do you realize what we would do with something like that? And how to stand on their own two feet? That we would be able to help them <laughs> to get. Do you realize what we could do if we had that? And they people, how to get from here, learning who they really are, and then going here. Because what they were saying is, oh, you have to, that we teach them how to buy the pond over here. That way they're not asking to use somebody else's land to get what they need. Just teaching them how to do it is great. They can be a supplier for others. They sat back in that meeting like, what is going on? Who is this chick? Be able to sit in a meeting and be able to tell people these things. You got to know. And you can't let them give you the wisdom that he's giving you, the knowledge, the understanding. All this authority I'll give to you and their glory. Whatever I wish. Jesus said, therefore, he said, therefore, if you'll worship before me, all of this will belong to you. Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. That would have gone through the average person's mind. Kingdoms. Showed him all the kingdoms in a moment's time. That means he was the principal demon over those kingdoms. Then he brought him to Jerusalem. And I got again, question if, throw yourself down from here. Jesus said, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. Or sorry, he said, for it is written, he tried to use the word to trick Jesus. And he said, in their hands, they shall bear you up, let you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. 
Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until when? An opportune time. So guess what that means? Temptation, I always say this, the devil knows how you like your tacos. He's not going to offer me something that I don't want. He's not going to offer me something that he hasn't watched to see if I really desire it. He's going to offer me something that's going to be catchy. I don't know. My, my question would be, since you say, like, the devil knows how you like your tacos, and he's not going to offer you something that you don't want, when he offered Jesus the kingdom, is that because that was something that he wanted then? So think from this perspective. He already had it. And it was the same thing that he did to Adam and Eve. A soul, like a, a soul thing, a soul problem, but, but I don't know. There was no soul problem. See if it was going to stick. It worked before on Adam and Eve. The first Adam. Jesus was the last Adam. Right? So he's trying to see if it's going to stick. Because if you go through the Bible, what was everything about? It was all about control. As you start in the Old Testament, they all were trying to control what? Territory. Now, Jesus is in the form of a man. He's wrapped in flesh with a soul. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to tempt him to see, well, all the other men wanted control and to be Lord over this and Lord over that. And, and they were willing to bow to these other gods. Let's see if we can get this one. He was above it all. Apostle? Yes. I always give the example. Um, <laughs> I always use the example of when me and OC at our old house, we wanted a refrigerator. And I put it that way. So me and OC wanted this new refrigerator. We had talked about it. We knew our refrigerator was eventually going to go out. And then we had some friends of ours that said, hey, we're cleaning out an apartment and guess what's in it? It is a side-by-side -side refrigerator. And we're like, oh my gosh, this must be God, right? Because they're just going to give it to us. It wasn't, we didn't listen. We were just so excited to get something that we wanted or that looked like what God had promised us, right? And so we get this refrigerator and it is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> we never took measurements. We never looked at the space it was supposed to be in. We can't open the drawers all the way. Our kitchen was not built for this kind of refrigerator. So what ends up happening is I had just had Jasmine. I'm an emotional mess. <laughs> so in the middle of the night, OC literally has to go get our old refrigerator um, so we have two refrigerators. He goes and plugs the one on our old one, which is sitting on a front porch, and plugs it in because I can't keep bottles and stuff cold um, because we can't even open the doors. Here's the deal. Not too long after that, we finally got rid of it. We hauled that thing out. We did get blessed, and we were able to get one. Actually, we got Aunt Deb and Uncle Troy's, and it was what we needed. But what happened was we had prayed for something and he's like, ah, I know what they want. And we didn't, we got what we prayed for, but it wasn't what God wanted to give us. And so you have to vet the voices to know the enemy will throw a decoy in front of you. And in that decoy, you miss what was really meant to be yours. So had Jesus said, I'll take this kingdom, you miss, you get a little one, not the big one. You know, you get the, you get the slice, not the whole pie. So understanding that when the enemy comes after us, sometimes he just throws the decoy in front of us, the one of lesser value. But God has something a lot more for us because he's going to give us everything more than we can think or imagine, whatever's perfect for us. And we have to vet the voices to know the difference between the decoys and the real McCoys. And uh, Apostle Nona said this to me. She said, the fake always comes first. That's what she said. Fake one usually presents itself first. And now as I'm reading this, the offer came first. If you fast forward to Matthew 28, our founding scripture, verse 18. So Jesus turned down the first offer, right? That looked like what he was going to look at. He said, I'll give all of this to you and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me where? Dominion. If he would have taken the devil's offer. Now he, the fake always comes first. So it's important for us to stop and ask. Make sure that we're vetting the voices that were even real. Is it what God is saying? Like it, but not be it. So we have to slow our roll. Vet the fear questions. When God speaks and tells us something, he tells us what it is. It's a sentence. It ends with a period or an exclamation. 
He doesn't cause question because you'll never understand. Even when he does ask questions in the Bible, he turns around and gives them the answer right behind it. So slow down. Vet the voices. Don't move so quick that you miss God. Slow it now. Listen to what the voice is saying. Measure it against scripture. And then choose to accept it or reject it. Amen? All right, it is 8.30, y'all. Any prayer requests other than us praying for Miss Velda? Continue to pray for me and my sisters as we're healing. We've got a... Um, help me, help me yes. vet the voices. Help me vet the voices. Help me to take time to what I'm hearing now so that I learn to know a firm foundation of knowing the voice of God. And not just other material voices that lead to confusion. I got to enough to know God is not always a confusion. I gotta sit still sometimes. I gotta sit Amen. still sometimes. Amen. Amen, Miss Sherry. We are definitely praying for you. Still waiting to hear from her on that. Yep. We didn't get a chance to talk this morning. Um, I had to finish working on a grant and uh, didn't get a chance to talk to them today. And then after I got out of that meeting, my head was spinning around. So I went and got my nails done. Don't they look good? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I think about that. <laughs> He didn't get his gun? Oh, no, he was here. He was here hammering out food. <laughs> he was slinging food. Amen. Any other prayer requests? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 